Good afternoon and salam for Paduan. This is Updates at Noon. I'm Mohana Priya. Making the headlines today, Communications and Digital Ministry providing monthly initiatives report. Man's body found in a gunny sack in Klang. It is still too early to decide on the state elections in the six states that did not dissolve their legislative assemblies before the 15th general election. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim said the matter is the affair of the respective state governments and his priority now is administering the country. Kita akan bincang nanti terlalu awal. Bagi saya dalam uh, setelah sebulan dua ini hanya tumpu soal kerja. Uh, belum lagi bincang soal PRN. Ada ini kita, ini soal urusan negeri. Ya. Uh, cuma dia akan tetapkan uh, yang sesuai. Kalau idealnya semua sekali lah. Tapi ini bukan di bawah, bukan di bawah bidang kuasa saya. Datuk Sri Anwar, who is also the chairman of Pakatan Harapan, also said it was still too early to decide on the distribution of seats among the coalition for the state elections, including in Trunganu. As for now, he wants to concentrate on government administration. In fact, he said that during an audience with the Sultan of Trunganu, Sultan Mizan Zainal Abidin, at the Istana Sharkia in Kuala Trunganu, they did not touch on the issue of state elections. The Ministry of Communications and Digital KKD has started the Cerita Bulanan KKD program to share a monthly summary of the initiatives implemented by the Ministry on social media. Minister Fahmi Fadzil said that he firmly adhered to the concept that the people are the employers and that they should know the progress and results of the work done. In his Twitter and Facebook posts, he also shared videos and pictures to report on the seven main focuses for last December. Ini adalah satu daripada 60 bulan perjalanan KKD untuk penggal ini. KKD akan terus berusaha untuk memberikan hasil terbaik kepada rakyat dan negara. The main focus included the free broadcast of the ASEAN Football Federation, AFF Cup, and the Unity Package prepaid mobile data plan. Also highlighted with the ministry's move to provide 800 megabits per second internet to facilitate rescuers on duty during the landslide tragedy in Batangkali, Slango, and the reactivation of 471 communication transmitter stations that were affected after the floods. Fahmi said the efforts also included an immediate investigation into the alleged disclosure of personal data and engagements with the relevant agencies, in addition to establishing strategic cooperation between the ministry and social media service providers aimed at curbing provocative content involving the three R's, namely ruler, religion and race. Malaysians are advised not to overreact to tourists arriving from China following the surge of COVID-19 infections in that country. Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Dato Sri Tiong King Singh said the government is always aware of the current COVID-19 situation in the country and for the time being there is still no need to impose restrictions, improve SOP or special controls on tourists from China. He said based on data received from China, only 10.9 million COVID-19 cases have been reported as compared to the United States with 99 million cases. He added if action is to be taken on tourists, it should be against tourists arriving from the U.S. as the country's death rate has also reached 1.08 million cases, but in China, it's only at 36,000. Met after attending a Chinese New Year lighting up ceremony in Petaling Street, Dato Sri Tiong also urged Malaysians to continue to prioritize their health, in addition to maintaining SOP to curb the spread of COVID-19, especially when the country's tourism sector has now resumed operations in full swing. A total of 232 million ringgit is needed to repair the infrastructure and public facilities damaged due to the flood disaster in the states of Peninsular Malaysia. Works Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nantalingi said most of the damage occurred in the East Coast states with repairs costing 196 million ringgit. 
A lot of the damage involved collapsed slopes and broken pavements. He said the ministry's recent visit to Thrunganu and Klantan found that the damages were due to the flooding of the pavement. He said repairs were underway with the expected completion depending on the level of damage, adding that slopes would take some time because it involves a lot of technical work. On the use of radio frequency identification, RFID on highways, Datuk Sri Nanta said the Malaysian Highways Authority and Plus Malaysia Berhad will hold a meeting today to find a solution to the issues on technology. In another development, a total of 209 million ringgit has been allocated for the project to upgrade the bridge across Sungai Kriyan and the construction of a flyover across the junction of Jalan Perskutuan to Jalan Trans Kriyan. Dato Sri Nanta said this is an effort to reduce travelling time during peak hours and overcome flash flood problems. He said the date of possession of the project site was 8th July 2021 and it is expected to be completed on 2nd February 2025. Elaborating further, he said there has been a little delay by 6% in terms of work progress, but it does not involve change in the project's cost since the delay was not too long. Jadi, maknanya dia bukan uh, terlewat terlalu lama. Uh, teruk lah ya, sedikit ini kerana ada masalah dengan pengambilan tanah ya? dan uh, masalah itu pun saya difahamkan adalah uh, dah diselesaikan uh, bersama uh, stakeholders yang berkenal dan uh, kita mengharapkan ini akan dapat uh, selesai dan masa terdekat dan selepas itu kita mengharapkan projek ini akan berjalan terus lancar selepas itu the minister was met after visiting the project site in Nibung Tabal. He said the project is set to assist traffic dispersion at parts of Federal Route 1 from Pulau Pinang to Perak, reducing travel time at peak hours, overcoming flash flood problems and, as such, ensuring the safety and comfort of road users along the route. A total of 1,000 babies born to Malaysian Armed Forces veterans in 2022 will receive a donation of 1,000 ringgit each in the form of an SSPN Prime Savings Account. Now, the fund was donated by Yayasan Veteran ATM through its new program, the ATM Veterans Child Savings Incentive Scheme Program, in collaboration with the National Higher Education Fund Corporation, PTPTN. Yayasan veteran ATM Chief Executive Officer Major General Zamri Jeffrey Darus said the main objective of the donation worth 1 million ringgit was to ensure that newborn children have educational savings to use after the age of 18. Apart from that, the foundation is also contributing 215,500 ringgit through the SPM 2021 Excellence Initiative to 413 Army veterans' children. Earlier, Major General Zamri Jeffrey and PTPTN Chief Executive Ahmad Dasuki Abdul Majid signed an MOU to establish a strategic partnership to meet the educational needs of children of Army veterans. Ahmad Dasuki said to support this collaboration, PTPTN will provide a donation in the form of an SSPN Prime Savings Account amounting to 50,000 ringgit, which is also under the new program for ATM members' children and veterans' bursary program. This donation will be given to 500 children of ATM members and veterans who successfully continue their studies at Tun Abdul Raza University. A man's body, which had started to decompose, was found stuffed in a gunny sack on the roadside in Aman Perdana, Klang, yesterday. North Klang District Police Chief ACP S. Vijay Rao said that the police received a report about a body found in a white gunny sack by members of the public at 6.10 p.m. In a statement today, he said the initial investigation found that the body was wrapped and stuffed in the white gunny sack and the body has also started to decompose. The body, which has yet to be identified, was only clad in a blue sarong without a shirt and was sent to Shah Alam Hospital for a post-mortem. He said the case was investigated under Section 302 of the Penal Code for murder. Members of the public who have information regarding the case are urged to contact the investigating officer or North Klang District Police Headquarters at phone numbers shown on the screen.
Economics and Sports, all hopes lie on two pairs to shoulder Malaysia Open Challenge. Boleh saya bantu? Hello, there's been a motorcycle accident here. Maybe an elephant ran it over? <laughs> Sir, there is fire accident at the address number 5 Jalan Timbika, Shah Alam. PGO from FRT, Shah Alam. There was no fire accident here. Over. Merce 999. Use it wisely. Top national men's doubles pair and reigning world champions Aaron Chia and Su Wu Yik again failed to live up to expectations when they crashed out in the second round of the 2023 Malaysia Open Badminton Championships. World number three Aaron Wu Yik went down 10-21-21-23 to Liu Yu Chen and Ao Xuan Yi of China, much to the disappointment of over 2,000 spectators at the Axiata Arena in Kuala Lumpur. It was Aaron Wu Yik's third loss to the China pair, having also gone down to them in the 2022 Indonesia Open in June and 2022 World Tour Finals in December. Yu Chen Tuan Yi are set to take on India's Satwik Sairaj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty for a spot in the semi finals. Meanwhile, national mixed doubles pair Go Sun Huat and Siobhan Lai Jemi were also eliminated in the second round after going down 16 21, 10 21 to top seeds Zheng Si Wei and Huang Ya Kiong of China. Only two Malaysian pairs are left standing to shoulder the challenge of the Malaysia Open. They are national men's and doubles professional pair Ong Yu Sin and Tio Yi Yi, as well as national mixed doubles pair Chen Tang Ji and To Yi Wei. World number seven Yu Sin Yi Yi came from behind to beat Taiwan's world number 15 Lu Ching Yao and Yang Po Han 17-21, 21-13, 21-14 in the men's doubles second round at the Axiata Arena. Dekat home kita lah. Ini yang buat mungkin ada something different. Mungkin ini lebih chill up kita. Ya, buat kita boleh apa ni, jadi main lebih bagus, lebih concentrate lagi. Kita memang on fire, lagi on fire. Sebab dengar chill semua dekat kita yang lebih on fire, lebih semangat macam tu. Ya. The independent home pair will take on Indonesia's world number one Fajar Alfian and Mohamad Rian Ardianto for a place in the semi-finals. Newly formed pair Tang Ji Yi Wei also brought cheers for the home fans when they stunned Indonesia's world number 12, Rehan Naufal Kusharjanto and Lisa Ayukusumawati with a 21-19-21-16 win. They credited coach Nova Widianto for their second round straight game win over the Indonesians. Coach, bagi tahu kita the pair itu uh, dia yang kucing dulu uh, yang di Indonesia uh, dia orang uh, banyak konsisten di defend atau control shutter tapi dia orang punya power kurang sikit so coach cakap kalau tak boleh kill dia sabar sikit uh, jangan tu rush nak menang itu point they have a tough task next against Thailand's 2021 world champions, the Chapol Puavaranukro and Subsiri Teratanachai. And with that, we end today's updates at noon. In our top story today, Communications and Digital Ministry providing monthly initiatives report. Tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10 p.m. on my free views, Salura and Berita RTM, Channel 123. Now we leave you with video footage showing thousands of baby giant South American river turtles recently emerging from nesting beaches along the Guapore River in Brazil. Thank you for watching. I'm Mohana Priya. Have a great day.